Hi, I'm Joe Ramsey. This is Mike Christopher and Ben Otero here on Movie Mania. And uh, it's such an honor to have you here. It really is. Uh, um, uh, Dawn of the Dead, one of my favorite mo uh, horror movies of all yeah. time. Absolutely amazing. Mine too. And, uh, mine too. I, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and actually, th that's kind of ties into one of the first questions I wanted to ask you. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your favorite zombie movie uh, series or just movie altogether? Well, I mean, I have to say I like Dawn of the Dead. Even if I wasn't in it, I mean, my part is integral to the movie and it's very memorable, but it's not It's not about my part. Right, you know? right. So I, I really like Dawn of the Dead because of the story. You know, uh, society breaks down and and you have the television station that's, that's sending people out to the to the shelters that are closed and they don't care because they're just worried about the ratings exactly it's, yeah. things haven't really changed much in 35 years you know and you know it's interesting I, I, I love Dawn of the Dead one of the main reasons though it's it's one of the first horror movies I can think of where the main characters are they, they are very smart they, they do something that you know they make you think what would you do in that situation and they, they you know they, they use the helicopter it's, it's a smart choice there, yeah. right exactly I well, love it well I think that's another reason why that Dawn of the Dead has become so popular is, is because it's actually information. There's information there, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's not just uh, running through the woods scared from somebody that's chasing you. It actually makes people think, you know, well, if there is a breakdown in society, what's going to happen? And what are you going to do? And, you know, basic how, survival how techniques in like an urban environment. Survival techniques. And then, and then taking that one, one step beyond, you have, you know, people that you know and, they're, and they've turned evil. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a zombie. It's just somebody that you know and is turned evil. And you have to make the decision, is this person good or are they evil? Right. And if they're evil, you know, what are you going to do? If they're biker gangs, you shoot them in the yeah, head. Pretty much. Exactly. You know? Tom yeah, Savini's just right. riding around, yeah. Machetes are good. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so I, I imagine you watch The Walking Dead, yeah. probably. Uh, what do you think about the show like that? I mean, the, the zombie apocalypse, to me, it's always been something that it almost works better in movies because there has to be an end or a beginning to it. I mean, there's only so many people on Earth, but this show is serializing it sort of into an ongoing thing. What there do you, is no Do you way. like the show? I mean... Well, at, at first I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. And, you know, it was a television show, and I wasn't really... I, I never read the comic books or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a big fan of horror movies in general. Uh, I mean, I'm in one, but I lean more to, like... Uh, uh, Blade Runner, 2001, A Space Odyssey, The Matrix, mm -hmm. things like Great things choices. that take you into a different place that you couldn't possibly get to. Mm -hmm. So I, um, my girlfriend was real interested in The Walking Dead, and she, she fell in love with it. And um, so I started watching it with her. And somewhere during the first season, I just got nauseous. You know, every every week I would get nauseous. And then I mean, you're anticipating this more nausea coming. And, yeah. and then I realized that, you know, at least with a zombie movie, you're there for an, an hour, an hour and a half, mm -hmm. and then it's over, you know, and you get back. There's a resolution. Thinking, yeah, about, yeah. thinking about something else, but with The Walking Dead, it just keeps going on. There's now always a cliffhanger. Years, yeah. and now it's years, you know, but that, in some ways, it is a lot more realistic because it, it's not ending. Right. It, it's and not just over the whole, when the movie's right. over. Just There's always going to be another problem. Right, something next year like is going to be a whole other set of circumstances, and you're, you kind of get attached to these people, and you realize, oh, this, this, you know, this could be me. I could be... I could be running around for years without being able to take a shower, you know? That's true, yeah. <laughs> I never thought of that. Yeah. All right. Um, how, do, you think, do you think movies in general have changed in the last, like, 20 years or so? I mean, uh, if not just zombie movies, too, but really just movies as a whole. And, and, sp and speaking of movies, how did you feel about the Dawn of the Dead remake? Well, I, I like the remake as a story. It took me a long time until I until I built up the interest to actually watch it. But when I did watch it, I mean, I, I liked it. I don't think the, the characters had the same amount of depth as the original. Yeah. I didn't think the story had the same amount of depth. I liked the I liked the, the scenario where you had the people communicating across from the tops of the buildings, you know. That's right, yeah. And and, and I liked that. I thought that I thought the zombie baby was just totally, just, <laughs> just totally disgusting. Yeah, that's right. That was you know, very weird. It was very weird. And, you know, and, um, you know, the... the the mall cops were were kind of a parody on the on the SWAT team from the original, which is like another That's step true. down. I never even thought about that. Yeah, yeah, that was, you know, yeah, yeah. lower. It's like everything was a little bit lower resolution than, than the original movie. But I really didn't think it was uh, it was really a remake. It was just they kind of like stole a couple tidbits here and there from it, you know. Yeah. But um, I think in general the thing that's really helped zombie movies is is the ability to 
that you don't really need a whole Hollywood production budget, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to make them. Um, there's a movie called Colin that uh, that came out in the UK and actually went to a film festival and won at, uh, film some film awards at, in Colin. And I talked to the guy on, when MySpace was just getting started. Mm -hmm. And I can't, geez, I, I feel terrible now. I can't remember what, what the, the the guy's name was that made it. But he made it for like 78 pounds. I think he had to buy a hatchet wow. or a crowbar or something like that. And he just got all his friends to make it. And there's there's a couple scenes in there that if you haven't seen it, it's 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 called Call. And I think it came out in 2008 or something like that. I'm gonna it's made in the UK. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. You'll be, you'll be shocked. I mean, yeah. you will be shocked. I so, love that. Min some of the minimal, yeah. minimalism. Low budget, but movies. it's actually yeah. really good. Yeah. Well, he said he was he was watching Dawn of the Dead and he saw the Hare Krishna zombie character, mm -hmm. and he started wondering, you know, what what happened to this guy? Where did he come from? What what was it like to just be slowly changing into a zombie and just be like walking around looking and not really know what's happening to you and, what, and what's going on? So, Colin is a, a zombie movie based on the perspective of the zombie. So it's okay. Oh, it's that's really so cool. that's interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, he gets you he don't gets see that a lot. Chased? Yeah. No, it's very 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 different. Yeah. Very different. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. What was the auditioning process like? Well, I was in a band, and um, we did a theatrical space theme. What instruments do you play? Uh, keyboards. Okay, that's cool. But mainly synth synthesizer. I'm not really a... I never tried to be a virtuoso okay. keyboard soloist or something. I like to make sounds and rhythms and put together and do stuff like that. Right. Um, that's awesome. I, uh, I was, was in a band, and we did a space theme show. With, with our music, we used to be on the stage in plexiglass tubes, and we had GEDs and crystals built around the keyboards. We had two keyboard players, a saxophone player, lead singer that played flute, a bassist, and a drummer. And uh, we all had bald heads because we did this space theme, mm -hmm. otherworldly oh, stage yeah. okay. set, you know. And so we got our pic the band's picture to George Amaro, and the saxophone player is the guy that's on the front cover of the of the DVD. Oh, okay. That's not me. It's the guy from the airport. Right, right. Okay. And if you look real quick, there's a guy in a red sweatshirt. He was the bass player. Must oh, have wow. missed the, uh, Yeah, I mean, he's real. It's probably maybe a second and a half or two seconds or something okay. like that. And then I, I kind of lucked out. I got, I got the. You got the iconic the, role. The scene. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. But uh, when I finally read, I didn't even read the script until I started doing horror conventions in 2008. Oh really? I, I never oh, saw. Really? I never saw a script or anything. I, I remember showing up at the, uh, at the hideout which was actually a, in George Mero's office building in Pittsburgh. That whole hide, the whole hideout scene and the, um, the, the air conditioning duct scene and all that stuff all, that was all filmed outside of the mall in, in an office building oh, wow. in downtown Pittsburgh. Because you don't need the mall. Yeah. You don't need the mall for all that whole stuff. You know, a pile of boxes in the door. Right. You know, a bunch of sitting around eating spam and... Exactly. Just crawling through yeah. the ducks. And yeah, you can't see yeah. the mall. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was all that was all done outside the mall, but um. Uh, so I I got that scene, but I'd never seen the script, and it was just when I finally saw the script, I was like, wow, this is really cool. The zombie goes up the stairs. The zombie pushes through the door. The zombie knocks over the boxes. The, the zombie attacks Fran, and so. Uh, was I was actually um, rooting for your character. Oh, thank I you. I was. I was like, please kill Fran. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because there's a there's a version of uh, the behind the scenes commentary in the three in the three disc set, and, it, and she's she's going on and on on and on and on. Like, look how slow that guy is. That I can't believe I got. Look how slow that guy's moving. I can't. Well, two things. I'm rooting for you now too. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I mean, two things. It's like. If you only have one scene, you might as well drag it out. Right? Yeah, yeah. And exactly. the other thing is, well, if I was so damn slow, why didn't you get away? You know, it's, you, or like you knock right you down the stairs, right, right. you know, yeah. you know, throw a box at you. Right, I mean something, you know. Exactly. But, but she did. But she did. We didn't practice that flare scene. Oh really? But she just lit it, and it was like, yeah, it was the very last. It was v very the very end of the, That must know, have been kind of startling then, just to see, you know. Yeah, probably. it was incredibly startling because. The flare like came within inches of my face, yeah. like this. And you have to act like a zombie and not care. Right. You're like, <laughs> and it, yeah. stay and in it, character. And it for totally that. freaked me out because I never expected her. To, I mean, she really got into it, you know. And she was shoving that damn thing in my right in my face, mm -hmm. and and so the sparks were hitting me in the face. Mm -hmm. And I was glad I had glasses on, yeah. but they were only you know oh, only so big, you know. And it, so I went like that a couple times, you know, just because I was supposed to try to grab it. And I was trying to protect my eyes, wiping hoping, away the flare, hoping yeah, that I, I could. 
blocked it, you know, from blinding me. Right. And then and then it was hitting me on the in my robe, and I'm worried about the thing catching on fire. Yeah. And then I was in my bare feet, and then <laughs> the sparks were going on the floor, and it's still glowing hot sulfur, and I had to step on it. Yeah. And walk into it and keep walking into it, and it's like, and I'm trying. To, you oh, know, man. You didn't even <laughs> have sandals? You were just walking on Well, I asked them to, if I could wear sandals, and they said no. They decided they wow. want me in bare feet. Huh. So that's and, cold uh, and hot. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. On the and some people um, some people laughed when they saw my character. Other people were, were scared when they saw the character. So I had hot and cold going on there yeah. and, and laughter and fear. So in, in yeah. a, on a couple I thought of levels, it was a perfect yeah, yeah, yeah. character. You know? Yeah, yeah. I thought it met in the middle. It was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it was a great role. And... Did you ever like come up with like a backstory for him or anything? Like why why was he the mall or anything? Well, I I started working on it a couple times and I started talking to about a couple different people and it never really went anywhere. And if I if I did do that, I would like to do some more research on some like conspiracy theory stuff that was going on back in that day and try to tie into that would be cool something right? that would be yeah. like kind of politically accurate and what was i doing I, I would probably you know not to give away any spoiler but but i would probably be on some kind of a uh, a mission or something and i was hanging out with a bunch of Hare krishnas as my cover that would be interesting that would actually yeah, yeah that, would, that would totally be and i'd watch a movie like that yeah, yeah. So a lot of depth gotta, to the character behind gotta, it yeah. gotta work on it you know so that when you amazing. see dawn of the dead again you're like oh wow oh, i know where yeah. that guy came from <laughs> but i never ate anyone you know and uh no you didn't no i didn't so yeah. but then but then Hare krishnas were vegetarian so it's kind of it makes yeah, sense yeah maybe it's just, just tomatoes or something right. you know I mean, <laughs> table leaving reincarnation too right yeah so it's <laughs> so it's a little funny. irony going on right yeah yeah is it is it a true they filmed Dawn of the Dead at night like while the mall was closed? I heard that just whenever it was closed, they just you know. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple uh, mall stories. The the one of the mall stories is the the we filmed at night, and nine, by nine o'clock when the mall closed, everybody would start driving their cars into the parking lot and showing up, and you just have these big huge crowd of people going through the doors, and then we'd all would all collect in a in a, a big staging area, and then there was all the makeup people there, and we'd all just sit around in there. In our clothes and stuff, and most people had plaid shirts and blue jeans, and and it was one of the other reasons why George Romero wanted me to to be the Hare Krishna zombie because he's just had too many people that were just plaid shirts and blue jeans. You know? Oh really? But yeah. That's, but that's you know you were back in Pittsburgh and it was cold in the winter time, and that's just what we, everybody wore plaid shirts and blue jeans. Right, right, that. yeah. But uh, so uh, um, we we did film it at night. We we went all the way all the way through the night until in the morning, and then in the morning everybody was tired and. When they started opening the mall up, then they had the cleanup crews come in and take all the bicycle tracks, or, I mean, the, the motorcycle tracks and the tire tracks and everything, and the blood and everything. Did they ever, like, leave anything out, get, like, by accident? Just well, a dead body in the corner they couldn't no, just they, throw that back there. They didn't do that, but we got a lot of strange looks from the, um, there was a, um, a senior citizens group that used to show up at the mall. <laughs> Go jogging. <laughs> and they used to do their exercises and stuff. And for some reason, they had access to the mall. And they, they would come there early in the morning and do whatever they did. You know, I, I didn't really stick around to see what they did. but I would probably freaked them out the first yeah, time they yeah. saw it. Uh, yeah. See a Harry Krishna coming at them. Yeah, <laughs> and then some it? of the... Well, the, the, the scenes that I did was just one... There was one night where I did some mm -hmm. establishing scenes in the mall. Another night where I did some more pickup sh shots. And then the hallway where, where Flyboy came running through... Mm -hmm. And that's where I found the door that went uh, uh, down the long hallway and then up the stairs. And then, so that was just, I just was there for two nights at the mall. But there were stories of the, the people that worked on the, on the movie a lot. Mm -hmm. They had, um, they would go out and eat breakfast when there's zombie makeup. <laughs> just morning, freak everyone out of the lot. diner. Yeah, because yeah, no, I mean, it wasn't like today. Everyone were they in character or would they like crawl in the diner? I don't know. I, I didn't. But I know okay. that they, they told me that they would go out and eat. That is interesting. You know, you could walk up now in zombie makeup. Nobody would bat an eye. But, you right, know, back no. in 78, everybody would be freaked out if you're yeah. walking into a Waffle House or something like right, that. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> uh, All right. Um, you had a question. There's no blood on your costume. How did... um? How did he get bitten? How did the Harry Krishna turn? Yeah, well, that's that was that goes back to the to the backstory, which was never really it was yeah, never, never really established. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just uh, all of a sudden the zombies just showing up. But I don't know if you're how much you know about the the Harry Krishna zombie scene back then. But they were they would hang out at the airports and they would hang out in the street corners in the different cities. That's right. Where they had the they had a temple, 
and you could go out there on the weekends and, and eat dinner with them for free and they would you know have their incense and stuff but but the whole process was they would walk up to you and, and say some you know kind spiritual thing and then give you a piece of incense and then you go no no I don't really go, oh no take please take it you know it's, it's free yeah so if you took it then they would ask for a donation Really? And then, yeah. Wow. So that was, you know, well, you know, we'd like to get a donation, like a dollar or something. You know. And then they would, and then you try to give it back, and they wouldn't get it back. And then <laughs> yeah, you yeah. start walking away, and then it follow you down the street. You know, you're trying to get back to work, you know. Right. Or, or if you took, if you took the incense, mm -hmm. and then they would give you the book. They have a their religious book is like a, a Bible. And okay. Mm -hmm. And they would give you the book, and then you go, well, no, I don't really want that. Well, you know, it's free, you know. So, oh, all right, you want to don't you don't want to make them feel bad because it's a religious book, you know. Yeah. And so you take the book, and then it's like, uh, well, we usually get twenty dollars. Twenty dollars? <laughs> get out of here! I'm not totally getting free. Yeah. Twenty dollars, you know? And you can, then they wouldn't. You try and to give it back, and then you try to give it back, and they like, wouldn't no. take it. And they're like, right. but you could and get then, and then they fall All sales down. final. Huh? Right. And, then you, and then they follow you down the street again. You know? Make you feel bad until you get them. Right. So, I mean, they were really annoying. And they were at the airports. They were at the train stations of the street. What do they do with the tambourine? Because that's one of your items. Well, they used to chant, um, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, hmm. Krishna Krishna, oh, Hare really? Hare. Okay. Some of these little organ, uh, organ sounding uh, accordions, and they had the tambourines. And, and the, yeah, it was like they had a big lineup, and they would chant and dance and sing and everything, you know. Oh, wow. oh, yeah, it was it, it was uh, it was a kind of a big deal. So whenever I I, I got killed in the movie, I a lot of people cheered, you know, and a lot of people thought it was funny. I was rooting for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people thought it was funny, but you know, it's like yeah, I was going, oh man, you thought it was funny. It was supposed <laughs> to be scary, but then other people, especially people that lived like on the second or third floor of their parents' house. One guy told me, he said, you know, he said, I couldn't sleep for weeks. Every time I heard a noise downstairs, I thought it was the only thing <laughs> 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 just coming up the stairs to get me. Yeah. I love that you had a point of view shot. That was my, that was probably my favorite shot of the movie of right before they, they ended up killing the Hare Krishna zombies. Mm -hmm. the, the, the point of view shot of, um, his name's escaping me right now, but uh, with the gun. Oh, uh, Rod, Roger? Yes, Roger. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I, I thought that was so cool. <laughs> yeah. First point of view zombie shot possible. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, uh, before Night of the Living Dead, the zombie movies were basically from the like 30s and 40s, and they were all like voodoo kind of. Yeah, it zombies. was magic. I didn't it know was, that. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, well, there was a very short section of zombie movies, the Oasis of the Zombies and White Zombie, and yeah, it's pretty cool if you go back and watch those old ones. And it, mostly, it was uh, a witch doctor or some evil madman who in, got a powder. That he would put the, all these uh, simple-minded people under the spell of his powder, and then they all became his zombie ar army. But it was very localized phenomenon. It wasn't something that was disease-based, or it wasn't something where the the zombies can infect each other. So that's what George Romero did: is he took that concept of the zombie, and he brought it into some, uh, resurrecting somebody from the dead, and that's how Night of the Living Dead got started. But once again, that was still a localized phenomenon. Right. So then, when Dawn of the Dead came out, then it became broad, where they they came from the one virus area. Was spreading. They came yeah. from one area in a helicopter, and it was there, and then it was there, and then they stopped for gas, and it was there, and then they found the shopping mall, and it was there, and it really started to allude to the fact that it was, you know, a, a more of a widespread. I, I think that alludes to the title though too. Whenever you see Night of the Living Dead, it's just one night, you know. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, but and, dawn, dawn and then the, day the, takes it to the next level. The right. whole planet's over on, yeah, as right. it implies. Your makeup in the movie uh, was very blue. Uh, what was what was what was the process like? How, like? how did you? How long did it take to apply all that? Well, actually, the makeup was gray, and for some reason, it turned blue with the lights. Oh, okay. okay. The way the lights picked up, like like I use a, a gray water-based makeup now when I do conventions, and occasionally I'll get somebody that will take a picture and it'll come out gray. Oh, really? But it usually comes out blue. Now, if you go and look, you look online and you Google Lord Krishna, who is the like the head of the Krishna religion this this deity krishna is blue really so okay so it's kind of weird i mean i don't it's know a little ironic yeah <laughs> you know, i don't know if there's anything to it but God you know, Lord krishna over here. Yeah. really channeling you know yeah. <laughs> channeling krishna dude but uh but yeah it it's it comes out blue that's amazing that's what that's yeah. crazy <laughs> sure is yeah <laughs> Are there any uh, any kind of interesting convention stories or anything like that? Any crazy fans or just stalking you? Well, um, there's an interesting story from being on set. 
I wasn't, like I said, I was a musician and I was just chosen for this role because I had a bald head. So I, I mean, I saw Dawn, Night of the Living Dead and I didn't really know how I was supposed to prepare for the role. Like now yeah. they have a zombie school. Are you serious? Oh, that's right. For like, walking oh, dead. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, you have to go to Greg Nicotero's zombie that, school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and learn how dead. to move yeah. and learn how to walk and know how to not to look at the camera and do all that other kind of stuff, you know. And when I when I asked George Romero, what am, what am I supposed to do? Am I do I have any lines? Or I mean, I knew he didn't have any lines, but it was just like a generic question, you know, like, what am I supposed to do? And he said, no, uh, zombies don't talk; they don't even grunt. So at that point where the movie was filming, they weren't even go groaning or anything like that. In his mind, it was just they were dead; and they weren't making any sounds. But I guess when they got to editing, that didn't really play out so well. It was, you know, it's probably like a creepy silence to some, it. Yeah, right. Yeah. But um. So I wanted to test out my, my ability to portray this character. So I'm standing there looking over the railing at the mall and just watching what's going on. I'm kind of way off in the back corner. A security guard watch, walks by. I say, hey, man, you want to buy some incense? He says, no, no, I don't, don't want to buy any incense. I says, oh, <laughs> come on, man, it's only a dollar. <laughs> and he said, no, really, he said, actually, uh, you know, I don't carry my wallet with me. I leave it back in my locker. If I'm chasing somebody and I happen to run outside, I lose my wallet and I never find it again, you know. Oh, come on, man! You have a job. <laughs> I know you have. I know you have a dollar. Yeah. And he says, "No, really. I, you know, I, mm. I leave it in in my my locker." And I says, "Dude, you know, come on. It's just, it's just a dollar. <laughs> you know." And he goes, "No, really. You know, I I want your incense, but but I don't have any money." And I says, "Oh, you people are all like." And I started walking away from him. And he goes, "No, man, really, really. I buy your incense from you, but I I don't. I left my." my wallet in the locker and he started like he starts chasing me <laughs> wow. you know chasing <laughs> that's the how you Krishna. sell incense yeah right and i go man i, I probably would have had a, a pretty good career with the uh with the Hare Krishnas if i would have joined them because he was actually now he would i had reversed the role and he's now chasing he wants him. to buy it he me. wants yeah. to buy the incense and he feels bad because he can't buy the incense. he's asking a dollar for everybody yeah. else right. like, <laughs> so i'm going i must be ready for this <laughs> seriously <laughs> wow the sales <laughs> That would have been awesome. Yeah. Any any crazy convention stories? You know, you've been to a convention, there's just yes, stuff that, going down. Um, yeah, I was at a convention in, in New Jersey once, and I saw a woman standing over there, and I saw her looking at me, and she's like looking kind of nervous. You mm -hmm. know? So I grabbed my tambourine, and I said to one of the guys this next to me, hey, watch this. I started going, <laughs> and banging my tambourine on my leg, and she's going, <laughs> 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 And then, and then she starts like walking away, and so I start following her. And then I go down, down the aisle, and then she sees me, and she turns around, and she runs back the other way. So I turn around, and I start. Next thing you know, she's running. She's running through the convention. She's screaming, and everybody's like cracking up. And I keep going. I keep going. And she's starting to scream louder. I mean, in her mind, yeah, she was actually being chased by the Hare Krishna zombie as a zombie. And, That's awesome. And Galen Ross goes. What, what what's wrong with that woman, you know? And I said, that's the effect yeah. that Dawn of the Dead actually had on some people, you know? I mean, she might have been a little over the edge, but or even a lot over the edge, but that's the effect that it actually scared, I mean, really scared people. Yeah, you know? it's, 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 it's legitimately terrifying to this day, really, when you, right. when you look at a lot of the way they walk and stuff. And uh, I don't know if I'd feel terrified or like, like oh my god yeah just run just run <laughs> that's away. so cool right. well the, well the whole the whole concept of the zombie apocalypse is is terrifying you know and yeah. it, it could be that it could be something else it could be martial law it could be a, a huge nuclear disaster but you know i i personally don't look at these movies as entertainment mm -hmm. you know i mean romantic comedies are entertainment you know yeah. but these things aren't enter i mean for god's sake you got somebody with a with this big long sword cutting off 20 people's heads yeah. before a commercial and everybody's sitting around eating sandwich or dinner or something, you know. Yeah, it's yeah like, exactly. It's, I th one of the most interesting things I think is that it's it's changed into entertainment, but it's not entertaining. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating and it's captivating and it's riveting, but it's not entertaining. Right. Yeah. You know, and I noticed that at one point um, in the last, like, few years when you look at Dawn of the Dead and everything zombie was its own genre at one point and I've been on a soapbox about this I've been talking to him about it um, but at this point movies like Zombieland and Shaun of the Dead they've started to use zombies as a topic instead and now it's they're, they're different you know genres like yeah. Warm Bodies is like a it's almost like a romantic comedy you know, with just with zombies in right. it 
And uh, I think that's one of the things that they've gotten yeah. away from is making a pure zombie movie, you know. Yeah. And Fido. Fido. Oh, that's yeah. right, yeah, Fido. Yeah, with, he has amazing. like a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any uh, advice to any film prospects or anything like that who maybe want to either get into the film business or make their own movie? Well, I guess the best thing to do is to say is start out with a really good story. Mm. You know, be uh, plan ahead to find a lot of unexpected obstacles. You have you may have to completely redesign a shot. You know, yeah. on location just because the main a actor or actress doesn't show up. You yeah. know, yeah. or or something happens and just you know just run with it. But the the best advice I think is just you know come up with a really good story, something that that touches you personally, and and don't stop until you get it shot. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Yeah, awesome. Well, you get a good soundtrack too. A good yeah. soundtrack, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that matters. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a lot easier nowadays though because there's so much so much music online. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, you can go now and just find any production song you yeah. want for any mood. You know, that's right? It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, Mike Christopher, uh, it's it's been such an honor to have you here. This is amazing. I, I never, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, this was this has been Movie Mania talking about uh, all things zombie with, like I said, our very special guest Mike Christopher. This has been Otero, and uh, this has been Movie Mania. <laughs>